Okay, so today we're going to learn about the product and quotient rules. So the product and quotient rules are just two more rules okay, for taking derivatives of functions. Okay, So last time we learned the basic differentiation rules, okay, where there is eight of them, for taking derivatives of certain functions. Okay? So for example, one of the rules that we learned was that derivatives distribute through additions and subtractions. That was called the sum or difference rule. Okay, so let's say that I could take the derivative of this term, the derivative of this term, and the derivative of this term all separately, and then add or subtract them back together. Okay? Well, the derivative of x cubed, we learned last time, that's just a power rule. The 3 comes down, subtract 1 from the power, so we get 3x squared. Whereas the derivative of 3x squared, this term right here, okay, the 2 comes down, multiplies with this constant, the constant multiplier rule, so 3 times 2 is 6, and again, we subtract 1 from the power, so 6x to the first. Okay? And then the derivative of a constant, 4, is just equal to 0. Okay? So the derivative of this term is just simplifies as 3x squared plus 6x. Okay? So again, um, derivatives distribute through additions and through subtractions. Okay? Um, today we're going to learn what happens with products and quotients. Okay. And last time we talked about this a little bit, okay, we said that the derivative of a product, it doesn't work that same way. That the derivative of f times g is not equal to the derivative of f times the derivative of g. I can't stress this enough. It's not right. And if you do it, I will be sad. Okay. Um, instead, the product rule is much, much more complicated. Okay. It says that the derivative of a product, f times g, is equal to the derivative of f, okay, so there's the notation for derivative of f, times g plus f times the derivative of g. Okay, so notice we take the derivative of one function, leave the other alone, plus we leave the other function alone and take the derivative of the function we did the first time. Okay, so I don't like this with all the f's and g's, it can get very confusing. So a lot of times I just say this as the derivative of the first times the second plus the first, leave that alone, times the derivative of the second. Okay. All right, well, let's put this um, into action. So let's say we take the derivative of a product, 3x plus 1 times 2x squared. Okay. Alright, well the product rule says that's the derivative of the first, which I'll call this function, so 3x plus 1 prime, okay, times the second function, notice no derivative here, plus I leave the first function alone, and then I multiply by the derivative of the second. Okay. Well, now we just need to take the derivative of these things, right here and right here. Okay. Well, this is again just some some rules and constant multiplier rules that the derivative of 3x is just 3 and the derivative of 1 is just, sorry about that, derivative of 1 is just 0, okay, because it's a constant, times 2x squared. Okay. And then over here, this is again a power rule, the 2 comes down and multiplies, so we get 2 times 2 or 4, subtract 1 from the power, so it's just 4x to the first. Okay. And then we can simplify this. 3 times um, 2x squared is 6x squared. Okay. Over here we can distribute a little bit and we get plus 12x squared plus 4x. And then we can combine like terms. So 18x squared plus 4x. Okay. Alright. Well, let's look at another one. Maybe with um, a trig function in. Okay. So let's say we take the derivative of 4x squared times cosine of x. Okay. Well, again, this is going to be my first function. This is going to be my second function. We want to choose a first function and a second function. Okay. And when we take the derivative, the derivative of the first function is this times the second function, plus we leave the first function alone, times the derivative of the second function, okay? 
And as you do more and more of these, you might actually skip this step right here. Okay? And just start doing these drills in your head. That you go the drill of the first function, well that's just 8x okay, times the second function plus the first function and times the derivative of the second function. The derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. Okay. So let's simplify this. 8x cosine of x minus 4x squared sine of x. Okay. All right. So that's the product rule. Okay. And we'll do some more examples in class, and maybe we'll do some more complicated examples, like a triple product rule even. Okay. So you'll see that in class. All right. Well, our next rule is the quotient rule. Okay, now the quotient rule says that the derivative of a quotient or a fraction is the derivative of f times g minus f times the derivative of g all over g squared. Okay, so even more complicated than the product rule. A lot more terms here and even more um, problematic is there is a subtraction here. And subtraction is a problem um, because subtraction order matters. Okay? Up here in the product rule, okay, it's addition. So if you got these things backwards, it wouldn't matter because 3 plus 5 is the same thing as 5 plus 3. Okay? But down here, there's a subtraction. And if you did 5 minus 3 or 3 minus 5, you get very different answers. Okay? So it's very important to remember this quotient rule and remember it very well. Okay? And that's very easy to mess up with F's and G's and remember which one's which. So again, I like to remember this as just top, bottom. Not even numerator, denominator, just top, bottom. So it's the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. Okay? all over the bottom squared. Okay, so again, make sure that we memorize this. Start it right away and make sure that we get this down right. Okay, so let's try an example. Let's say the derivative of sine of x over x. Okay, so again, the quotient rule is just the derivative of the top. I'm just going to write these terms out. Sine of x derivative times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. Okay. All right. And again, this is good for your notes at first, so you can kind of see where all the terms are coming from. But as you do more and more of these, you probably actually just start to do this on the fly, where if you're taking the derivative of sine, you already know that that's equal to cosine. Okay. And derivative of x, that's just equal to 1. Okay, so you might not even write that first step. You just jump straight to here. Okay, and that's good. All right, and then finally, I'm going to simplify this a little bit. Namely, you should always write algebra terms before trig terms. Okay, um, and That's not trying to be a stickler. That's actually going to help um, reduce some errors in computation. So very good idea to always do that. Okay, so this is our final answer. All right, well, let's look at another example. Okay, in fact, I'm going to look at two examples, okay? but they're both the same problem. Okay? Now, why would I look at the same problem twice? Okay? Well, because, like I said, quotient rule has the subtraction in it. So order matters. It's very easy to mess this up. Okay? So if you're on a quiz or a test and you think you know the quotient rule, try to do this problem. Okay, or both these problems, and do them in two different ways. Okay, so number one, use what we did in our last video. Okay, we didn't have the quotient rule, so instead of that, we said that one over x squared is just a power, x to the minus two. Okay, so taking this derivative is a power rule. The minus two comes down, subtract one from the power, so minus two minus one is negative three. Okay, so this is negative two over x cubed. Okay. In fact, if this problem was on a test, this is the way you'd want to do it. Okay. But if we wanted to use the quotient rule, if we had to, like in the previous problem, you have to use the quotient rule on this problem. Okay. So if we want to make sure that we got the quotient rule right, 
and we already did it this way, we take the derivative of this and we use the quotient rule, or at least how we think we um, know the quotient rule. Okay? So I know the quotient rule, right? Um, it's the derivative of the top times the bottom okay, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. Okay? Now the point of this is that if I had the quotient rule wrong, it's not going to equal to this thing down here. But if I have it right, and I simplify, it should equal to this, okay, this thing down here. Okay, so let's do this. The derivative of 1, that's a constant, so it's 0 times x squared, minus 1 times the derivative of x squared, that's a power rule, 2x, okay, all over x squared squared, that's a law of exponents, multiply those, 2 times 2 is 4, okay, and we simplify this, this is minus 2x over x to the fourth, or negative 2 over x to the third, okay? So, voila, I actually do have my quotient rule right. And of course I do, because it was right here on this previous page, okay? So it's very easy for me to get it right. But on a quiz or a test under the pressure, um, if you have some extra time, just to verify you have your quotient rule correctly, this is a good exercise to do, okay? All right, well, the final thing that we're going to do with the quotient rule is to complete our derivatives of trig functions. So, so far we only have two trig functions, but there's four more. Okay? If we have the derivative of tangent of x, okay, we're going to use these along with the quotient rule. Okay? Well, how do I use the quotient rule and tangent? Well, remember that tangent is just sine over cosine. Okay, so now I can use the quotient rule. Okay? And this time I'm going to try to do these derivatives on the fly. So um, let's try to keep up. Um, the derivative of a quotient is the derivative of the top. Okay, well, what's the derivative of the top? That's cosine okay. times the bottom okay. minus the top. Okay, so the top times the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of cosine is negative sine okay. all over the bottom squared. Okay. Now simplifying, we got cosine times cosine is cosine squared. Uh, minus minus, a so plus sine times sine is sine squared. Okay. All over cosine squared. Okay. And now we're going to simplify this a little bit more. And that is that cosine squared plus sine squared, this thing is equal to 1. Okay, That's Pythagorean's identity. So this is really equal to 1 over cosine squared. Okay? And remember that 1 over cosine is, using a little trig, secant. So 1 over cosine squared is secant squared. Okay? So all in all, this says that the derivative of tangent, going all the way down to here, is equal to secant squared. Okay? And that will be our ninth rule. Okay, so let me just write that down. The derivative of tangent is equal to secant squared. Okay. Well, we have three more trig functions. Okay. The derivative of secant. Well, you can write secant as 1 over cosine and use the quotient rule and do some simplifications. This comes out to be secant x tangent x. In fact, maybe in class we'll actually do this example together. Okay. And then... If we want to take the derivative of cotangent, well, cotangent is cosine over sine, so again we could use a quotient rule, and we could simplify and we get negative cosecant squared of x. Okay. And finally our last trig function, again we can get this using quotient rules, is derivative of cosecant, cosecant is 1 over sine, and when we take that derivative we get negative cosecant x, cotangent x. Okay. So in class we're going to work on some more complicated examples and maybe some applications, Okay, so maybe some velocity problems or tangent line problems, but make sure to bring these notes to class, Okay, and I will see you shortly.